Hi, Jim Bowers here with another YouTube video on Bowers 95713. Today we're going to do some tips and tricks for the Phantom DJI owner. All right, this is your Phantom, and the first thing you'll notice is we've got prop guards on here. Prop guards are a necessity for all Phantom owners. They're just a good idea. They'll keep you, they'll help you from bumping into things. If you hit a tree with it, you'll glance off of that tree instead of hitting that prop. Because if you even touch that prop on a branch, this thing's going to flip and roll to the ground. So put prop guards on there. Once you do get a set of your $15 prop guards, paint the front prop guards a different color. So these are painted yellow, and what that does is it just helps you with orientation. Where, where your front is, where your back is while you're flying, it gives you a visual aid for where the front of the aircraft is. So paint your prop guards. We've also upgraded the props on this Phantom. This is a 1.2 Phantom, and it's got the opposing threaded uh, motors on it. So we upgraded the props and put vision props on it. The advantage to the vision props is, one, it gives you longer flight time. Two, they're a lot more stable and less vibration. And three, they have self-tightening uh, screws on them. There's no prop nut on a vision prop. So when you put these on, you just spin them on and they self-tighten. And they self-tighten while it's flying. So you never have to worry about a flyaway prop and flipping to the ground because you didn't tighten your prop nuts down tight enough. So check them out. The vision props, you can get them on eBay for about 15 bucks a set get a couple of sets because they do tend to chip really easy so uh, pick up some some vision props and it'll really help you in the long run all right uh, one of the things you want to do before you take off every time you take off is you want to check your battery don't just assume that your battery's got enough voltage in it pick up one of these they're maybe 10 bucks on hobby king or any one of the other ready-made rc or one of the other websites and uh, you can get different kinds some of them will tell you what percentage of battery that you have left. This one just tells you the voltage of each of your cells and the total amount of voltage. To fly one of these Phantoms, you want to have about 12.5 volts on a fully charged battery. So you just take your balance lead, your balance lead on here and you plug it in and it's going to give you a readout right there <clears throat> of each cell's voltage and then the total voltage. If that reads 12.5, 12.6, you're ready to go. One of the big mistakes people make is they don't wait long enough for their LEDs to lock in. When you arm your Phantom and it's sitting there on the ground, the first thing that it's going to do is going to run through the whole LED sequence and then it's going to go green, red, red, red. What that means is there's not enough satellites out there for it to mark its home position. So do not take off if you've got three red LEDs flashing. If you've got two red LEDs flashing and then a green, that means you've got six sat or you've got less than six satellites locked in. If you've got one red, so it's going green, red, green, red, then that means that you've got exactly six satellites. If it's just pulsing green, 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 green pause, green pause, that means you've got more than six satellites and you're ready to take off. Don't take off sooner than that. Wait for, your, wait for your LEDs to go all green. You'll be sure that you've got a good home lock position on your Phantom and you're going to reduce the likelihood of a flyaway. All right, here's a little bit of an upgrade that we did. I'm gonna show you something here. You know when you're coming in for a landing on your uh, Phantom, they tend to hit the ground and tip and they'll tip over forwards and you know and and if you don't have prop guards on you're going to chip your props so if you do have prop guards on it's going to make it a little safer but we've come up with an upgrade that'll help you even even further we've developed these lexan uh landing gear skids this is your standard phantom here without anything on it and you'll notice this has lexan uh, uh landing gear skids on it and you can see where we've bolted it on here and they're sticking out an inch and a half in the front and an inch and a half in the back. Very, very lightweight, but when you come in for landing, you're going to come in and land this thing and it's not going to tip on you. You can hardly even push this thing over and even if you did, it'll right itself again. So see how easy this one tips and this one doesn't want to tip at all. Very, very stable. So 
landing gear skids, another good idea and a, a little bit of an upgrade you might want to consider. There's another upgrade that we did and that's right here. If you look close, you'll see there's a Lexan um, uh, shelf unit right there. In order to install OSD and our uh, FPV uh, video transmitter, we installed this Lexan shelf in between the landing gear and the body. We also put these uh, three quarter inch extensions in here and you can make those out of plywood or um, you can make them out of plywood or Lexan or plastic. Just cut them, drill them, shape them and then make this little shelf unit here and you can Velcro your OSD or your FPV transmitter right to that. You want to make it as narrow a profile as possible so that your propeller thrust isn't hitting this stuff uh, while it's forcing air downward. So making it a real close profile to the body. Let's take a look at the radio for a second. Uh, you know, here's your stock standard radio. After, when you get ready to fly on any flight, the very first thing that you should do is look at your switches. Always check your switches to make sure that you are in GPS and that your course lock home lock is in the off position. Unless you're some hot dog and uh, pro pilot that wants to fly in manual mode, but of course you've got to set that in the NASA software. But uh, so the, it's GPS and ATTI, ATTI if you haven't set up your manual mode in the NASA assistance software. Here's the Phantom again, and uh, you notice here we have the big battery door from Shapeways.com. If you want to put an extended life battery, a battery in there that'll last longer than the standard uh, Phantom battery, you're going to need a bigger battery door, or you're going to have to notch the door to get the battery um, to uh, fit in there. You'll have to notch it and plug it in on the outside of the door. Here's a standard Phantom battery here. It's a 2200 mAh battery, and uh, I believe they're a 25C battery. No, it's actually a 20C battery. So um, the Phantom battery, it's a good battery, and it's uh, very durable. It won't puff on you or anything like that, but you're not going to get really long flight times with this battery. If you're lucky and you're flying a, a, a Phantom that's fully loaded, so to speak, then you're going to get about six minutes of flight time with this battery. Now here's what I recommend. Move up to the Zippy 2800 battery. That battery right there, we've tested a lot of batteries, the Brand X black batteries, uh, the Turnigy batteries, and all the different ones out there. But we have found that this battery right here, the 2800 Zippy, is just an all-around great battery. It's almost the same size as the Phantom battery. It's a little bit bigger, which is why we're putting the uh, the big battery door from uh, Shapeways on here. But you notice uh, it's going in there almost all the way. So once you get your battery in there, you can close this up and we've got the uh, big battery door holding all that wire in there. So here's what we did out here. If you notice right here, we bought the Easy OSD system. And the Easy OSD is giving us the uh, on goggles information, you know, all the telemetry, the heads up display, whatever you want to call it, uh, in our goggles. So it gives you altitude and uh, speed and your battery voltage, which is really important. It tells you how much battery you've got left and uh, your altitude and a return to home arrow. So no matter how far out you get, with this Phantom, I'm flying out 2,500 feet and more. And uh, with that easy OSD system, I can be 2,500 feet out there and spun around in all kinds of different directions. And all I've got to do is fo follow my arrow home and it'll take me uh, back to my home point. So easy OSD, you can buy it on hobbyking.com. Let's take a look at the bottom of the Phantom. Down here we've got our Fat Shark 250 milliwatt uh, video transmitter. So this is what uh, we're transmitting our video signal back to our Fat Shark Dominator goggles with. And you notice I've got the upgraded antenna on here. This is the Immersion or uh, SpiroNet antenna. And um, you get two of them in the kit. They're about 40 bucks, something like that. But uh, the SpiroNet antennas seem to give us the best range out there. So uh, not a bad antenna 
to buy. Uh, over here we have our GoPro camera. Here's the GoPro right here. Now we're using a GoPro white edition. And the reason for that is there's no point in, as far as I'm concerned, there's no point in buying the silver or the black edition when number one, you're trying to reduce vibration. So really all you want to shoot in is 720p and 60 frames a second, high definition, and you're going to reduce the jello effect. So um, uh, use the white edition for that. There's no point in spending all this money on a black edition GoPro when the white edition will still shoot in 1080p and you can get uh, you know good quality photos. But if you do crash and burn, at least you're only wasting $199 for a white edition as opposed to you know close to four or five hundred whatever it is for the black edition if you buy this at best buy i recommend you get the two-year warranty with it it's about 60 bucks but the two-year warranty is completely unlimited if you crash it break it step on it your battery explodes uh you you know kick it down the street i don't care what you do to that that camera it's covered under warranty best buy will either fix it or replace it so it's a good investment to buy i don't usually pitch warranties i mean i don't believe in extended warranties at all i never buy them for anything but for this i thought that was a really good idea the extended warranty over here we have our uh, our flight camera that's a 700 tvl camera so it's basically a sony knockoff camera and uh, we use this for our flight camera so that's what we're looking at through the goggles and then we use the GoPro for recording high definition video this one is a low light camera it'll get down to 0. Uh, 0. 0.08 lux so it's a real low light camera you can uh, literally um, fly in in dusk almost to complete darkness it starts to look a little bit black and white when you when the sun really really starts going down but uh, you'll have a lot of fun flying it at nighttime that's a 700 tvl camera sony knockoff and you can get that for about 80, 89 bucks on hobby king so now that we've gone through all of that pre-flight stuff let's uh fire up the phantom and uh get it going one of the first things that you want to do is uh you know uh the, the first thing you do is always turn on your radio first, right? Turn on your radio, wait for the light to stop blinking. Once the light has stopped blinking, then plug in your battery. You don't want to jostle it around. So just arm your batteries or plug in your batteries. And while you're waiting for your constant green flashing light, carefully go down there and turn on your camera. Don't pick up the Phantom and you know turn it upside down and turn on the camera and all that sort of thing because you're just jostling the thing around and you're throwing all kinds of erroneous information at it that could potentially lead to a flyaway we don't know that for sure but better to be safe than sorry so here we've got the phantom and it's just hovering here when you first take off don't just take off and just go haul ass out there and um, you know, expect everything to go just rosy. Take off, get up about six or seven feet, and let the GPS settle down. In other words, you're six feet off the ground, you're hovering, and you'll notice that this is not drifting all over the place. It's staying pretty much exactly where it's supposed to stay. So keep an eye on that, and then it's time to head out and go do your thing, all right? So let us settle down first before you go flying off. All right, we just got back off of our flight there and there's a few things you wanna do post-flight to make sure everything ran okay. Uh, first thing you wanna do is unplug all of your electrical. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is unplug the battery from my headset. So I've unplugged the battery from my Dominator goggles headset. Don't wanna to forget to do that because you, know, you don't wanna get a a beeping noise in your ear while you're flying because that means your goggles are going dead so second thing you'll notice is we still have power to the phantom so never turn off your radio before you turn off the phantom unplug the phantom first because if you turn off your radio first what's happening is is the phantom is thinking that 
it's going into fail-safe mode. So that means that if you waited for 60 seconds, it's going to try to take off and return to home. Now, even if this is home, it's going to lift off the ground, go up 20 feet, and then come back down and land. And that you could panic. I mean, I've actually done it myself before. And uh, when those motors start up, you go into panic mode because you think the thing's trying to fly away on you. So just make sure that you unplug the battery on the Phantom first. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that the camera is turned off and that you're not still recording. So turn off your camera if you're recording video and then turn off your or unplug your Phantom battery. Okay, so what you want to do is make sure that you cycle the radio. Every time you finish one battery and you're getting ready to put in a fresh battery, you want to take the old battery out, put your fresh battery in, but before you plug the battery in, cycle the radio. So just turn the radio off, turn the radio back on again and wait for the light to go constant. And then once that's happened, then plug in your battery and arm the Phantom. But the reason you want to do that is because you want the radio to have a fresh bind. All right, another thing we did for our FPV, we've got our Fat Shark 250 milliwatt FPV transmitter mounted right here to the bottom. We're using the Spironet antenna on the quadcopter itself, and then we're using the five turn helical on our goggles. This is the five turn helical, and it's put out by uh, Multicopter Richard Shelton. It's an IB Crazy five turn helical, and it'll get you out there over 2,000 feet. So uh, good investment, that, uh, that antenna. Here's another tip for you. You'll notice I've got all of my Phantom gear right in the back of my car. And you might have it in the back of your car or the back of your truck or wherever when you're transporting your stuff around. One of the things you have to consider is what if one of your batteries explodes? In the years that I've been flying, I've had two batteries completely explode on me. And when these things go off, they come out with a huge fiery explosion sometimes. So you really have to be careful with a LiPo battery. One of the things you can do to protect yourself with these batteries is put them in an ammo box. You notice here, you go to an Army Navy surplus store and buy one of these ammo boxes. They're about 20 bucks or so, but with one of these battery boxes, you can keep all your LiPo batteries inside the box and protect yourself against uh, one of your batteries going nuclear on you and causing a fire in the back of your car. Here's another quick short tip for you. If you want to get maximum range and the most efficient range out of your radio, never point your antenna straight out from the radio. Take your antenna and point it at about a 45 degree angle from the radio. What you're doing is, is you're allowing those radio waves to come off of it. Remember, there's a dead spot straight out from the antenna. And since you're flying out there, you don't want to point your antenna at the aircraft directly. You want it on a 45 degree angle so that that and that signal gets out there and reaches out to your phantom. So point your antenna at about 45 degrees. Hey, check it out. We've got geese to chase with our phantom. I've chased these things a number of times and they're a lot of fun, but you got to be careful because geese will attack your phantom if they're threatened. But uh, anyway, I wanted to give you a heads up now uh, on calibrating your compass. There's a lot of rumors and speculation out there about how often you should calibrate the compass on your Phantom. And really about once every couple of weeks, depending on how often you're flying. If you're flying every day, then I would calibrate your compass every two weeks. Once every 20 flights or so. There's guys out there that will calibrate their compass literally every time they fly. To me personally, that's just too much. It's a royal pain in the butt to have to do that over and over again when there's really no need to. If the, cali if the compass is calibrated correctly, your, your Phantom should fly just fine. The way to check that out is take off and hover off the ground and just let it hover there and get its GPS lock in nice and tight. 
if it's, if it's wandering all over the place, then your compass may need to be calibrated. But if it's holding its position and staying within a foot or so, then your compass doesn't need to be calibrated. We're gonna go through that now. So the first thing you need to do is, is to arm your Phantom. Plug your bat, or turn on your radio first, then plug in your Phantom and wait for a continuous green light with no red lights flashing. If you've got red lights flashing, that means you don't have GPS lock yet. So once you've got that continuous green LED flashing light on the back of your Phantom, you're ready to calibrate. So the way you do that is reach up here to your ATTI switch right there where it says ATTI and GPS and you want to flick that six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you'll notice that the light went to continuous yellow and it's ready to be calibrated. The first thing you do is rotate the, fa the phantom around 360 degrees. So we're gonna turn the phantom, just turn it all the way around 360 degrees around on a flat axis and you notice the light turned green. The next thing you do is point the light downward and this is gonna be a little tricky for me but I'm gonna give it a try. You point the light downward and turn it 360 degrees again. So we turn the Phantom on its end and then just flip it around all the way around 360 degrees and then you'll notice and now we've got a constant green light again. So we've had a successful com compass calibration. If you get a yellow light then you haven't accurately calibrated the compass and you'll need to do it again. All right. Now, if you cannot get it to calibrate, you may need to reset your compass completely. What you do is find a magnet. It can be a, you know, like a, a mechanics garage magnet, one of those sticks with a magnet on the end, or it can be a magnet off of a, uh, uh, RC airplane that holds the, the, the dome down any kind of a magnet at all. So just find a magnet and then go down here to the compass, which is right down here on the leg, and you wanna take the magnet and just swirl it around over the surface of that compass. Once on the front, once on the back, and just sort of mess up the compass calibration by moving a magnet around on the surface of that. Once you've done that, then go back and recalibrate your compass again and what you should end up with is a green flashing ready light that says you're ready to take off. That's doing the compass dance, and I hope you're successful. So hey, if you'd like to order the three quarter inch Lexan risers for your landing gear and the shelf unit that you can install your OSD or your transmitter on, and for the uh, landing gear skids that we put on the bottom of them that stick out one and a half inches on both ends that help you from tipping over all the time, we'll send them to you for 40 bucks. So send me an email to jimbowers at foothill.net and we'll set it up through PayPal and we'll get them off to you in the mail right away. That's going to do it for today, gang. I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video for tips and tricks on the DJI Phantom. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, you'll see more interesting videos and tutorials in the future and a few crashes probably. So uh, if you're not crashing, you're just not flying it right. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you again on YouTube.